Hey everyone, this is the MVT-9000. It's a magma volcano tamer that converts the heat of magma into power using steam turbines and outputs cold igneous rock at the end of the process. The MVT-9000 is an improvement based on my previous uh, volcano tamer. It works on the same principle but takes twice as less space and is far easier to build. So let's go over the operation of the system. So magma is dropped in small amounts into the heating chamber over here. The magma then transfers heat via metal tiles made out of tungsten and the heat transfer is controlled by a mechanized airlock and a thermosensor. The presence of magma in the chamber is measured by this hydrosensor. Now when the magma cools down and turns into igneous rock it is picked up by a sweeper which loads it into a conveyor rail. However, if that magma is turned instead into a tile and not, and not into debris, then this robo miner will mine this tile and turn it back into debris form. So the conveyor rail then loops into the steam chamber through an improvised temperature rail sensor. Now, this rail sensor is composed of a thermosensor placed in a small chamber filled with a small amount of hydrogen. As the conveyor rail passes through the chamber, it exchanges heat with the hydrogen and the temperature of the hydrogen is then measured by the thermosensor. The igneous rock on the rails cools down as it exchanges heat with the steam inside the chamber. At 220 degrees Celsius, the igneous rock is pulled from the loop and redirected into a diamond heat exchanger where it is further cooled to around 50 degrees Celsius and stored by, uh, by a sweeper into a container. Now, the room that houses the volcano, robo miner, conveyor loader, and the rail sweeper are in total vacuum to prevent the magma from transferring uh, heat into its surrounding and boiling everything up. So, the cooling of the machinery in vacuum is accomplished by creating a small pool of liquid at the bottom of the room. A small liquid pump is activated once in a cycle for a brief moment and pumps the liquid on top of the machinery. Single tiles are placed below the sweeper and the robominer to allow interaction between the liquid and the machines. The liquid then flows back into the pool. Now the conveyor loader is placed one tile away from the liquid pump to prevent the falling liquid from touching the rails coming out of the loader, which can result in liquid boiling from the intense heat of the igneous rocks on the rails. And finally, the liquid which we use to cool the machinery is being cooled by an aqua tuner cooling system. Okay, so let's talk about the cooling system. The cooling system is composed of an aqua tuner loop and some liquid reservoirs right over here that houses the coolant. Now, an aqua tuner loop is a special way of connecting the aqua tuner using a liquid shutoff valve and a liquid thermal sensor. A coolant that enters the loop right from this bridge, is first cooled by, an aqu by the aqua tuner and on the way out passes through the, a liquid uh, thermosensor. If the sensor reads that the liquid temperature is higher than the value set on the sensor, it will activate the liquid shutoff valve and send the liquid back into the aqua tuner for another round of cooling. However, if the temperature of the liquid is below the value set on the sensor, then the liquid shutoff will not be activated and the liquid will exit the loop right from this bridge. New liquid will be able to enter the loop only when the old liquid currently circulating in the loop exits. Now the left liquid reservoir over here receives the coolant at the end of the cooling loop. As this liquid exits the reservoir from this port, it is treated exactly like the aqua tuner loop. This liquid is checked by a liquid sensor that has the exact same value of the other liquid sensor. If the temperature of the coolant is below the set value, it will send it back into the cooling system, and if it is not, it will send it into the aqua tuner to the right reservoir, right over here. Both of those reservoirs serve as buffers to ensure fluid liquid flow through the pipes. Now the cooling system accomplishes three major goals. Number one, it cools the steam turbines. Number two, it, it cools the vacuum chambers. 
the liquid inside the vacuum chamber. And number three, it cools the diamond heat exchanger. For the choice of coolant, I chose polluted water due to its high thermal capacity. Now, since the cooling required for this system is very intense, I added additional whiz wards to support the cooling system. In addition, it is possible to replace two of the Swiss watts with a power control station to boost the power output of the turbines even further. Now, duplicants have easy access into the steam turbine chamber and the vacuum chamber, so no problem in that regard. However, as of the making of this video, currently it is impossible to tune up the turbines. It just doesn't work. So this is for future uh, reference. Okay, let's go over the automation. The automation for this system is very, very simple. The steam turbines are controlled by a smart battery to prevent wasting power. Once the battery is full, the turbines will stop working. The mechanized airlock controlling the magma flow is connected into the output of an end gate. The end gate will send a green signal only if the magma chamber is nearly empty and the steam temperature in the steam chamber is below 200 degrees Celsius. So this covers the entire operation of the machine. Next part will be to show you step by step how to build the entire thing from scratch. Alright, so the total space required for this system is 38 tiles long and 16 tiles high. A construction begins by placing the foundation, like you see right now, Ladders and open spaces are to account for easy duplicant access to all building areas. All areas are closed by water airlocks. Now, the insulated tiles are made from igneous rock, and the metal tiles are made from tungsten. The right chamber, remember that it must be filled with vacuum. Now, since it's vertical, it is easy to create this vacuum by simply placing a pump at the bottom and pump out all the gases. Now, although it is not required, I recommend uh, to create a vacuum in the steam turbine chamber as well to create a room with pure hydrogen uh, later on. Okay, so once the base structure is complete, the hardest part is done, really, creating the vacuum and all. Now, all that is left now is to place the components and plug everything together. Now, placing the component is going to be easy because duplicants have access to all the construction areas and there's no need for any exosuits or anything like this. So let's, uh, let's get to it. Okay, so all components are in place. Now a few notes here that the aqua tuner and the liquid shutoff must be made from steel. Both of those mechanized airlocks must be made from either wolframite or steel since they are exposed to high temperature. They are touching magma and burning igneous rock, so we don't want them to melt. Now the rest of the components can be made from whatever metal is available to you. Copper and iron are the most common choices, so I chose them. And I highly recommend against using lead though, so there's that. In addition, you should extend this gas pipe from the vent, so we can fill this chamber later with hydrogen. And finally, the steam, the steam chamber should be filled with um, temp shift plates made out of diamond to spread the heat evenly across this long chamber. And once all the components are placed, we can begin connecting everything together. Okay, so let's start with power. Now, this is pretty straightforward. Steam turbines are connected through heavy watt wires into the smart battery and then fed into a transformer. And those heavy watt wires should also be connected into the main power grid uh, right from this place. This goes into your main power grid. Now, from the transformer, we run a conductive wire uh, through all components. The material used, used can be whatever for the most uh, sections, except the line that feeds the mechanized airlock in the magma chamber. This section must be made from tungsten or steel since it comes in contact with the magma. And that was power. Pretty self-explanatory. Next part, automation. Okay, so begin by placing the end gate and the not gate, like you see right now, and then connect all the wires. Now, the wires can be made out of whatever fine metal you have. Once again, I recommend avoiding lead. Uh, you can use lead, I guess, to connect the steam turbines into the smart battery, but for the rest of them, I recommend not using it. 
And now the only place where you must use a tungsten or steel wire is this small section of wire coming out of the hydro sensor, since this area is exposed to magma. And other than that, uh, once we connect all the wires into the components, we tune up our sensors. So our hydro sensor is set to 200 kilograms below. Our clock is set to activation time zero, active duration 1%. Steam chamber thermal sensor, 200 degrees Celsius above, both liquid sensor at 5 degrees um, above. The rail sensor is 230 degrees below. And finally, our smart battery at 90 high threshold and low threshold, anything except zero. You can go with 20. You can use this total threshold to create a priority if you have several generators. Just make sure this doesn't go to zero. So that's our automation done. Okay, next up, piping system. This is pretty straightforward. Simply connect the pipes as you see on the screen. You don't have much to add here. All insulated pipes are made from igneous rock. The radiant pipes are made from iron, but any refined metal will do, even lead. And yeah, that's pretty much the piping system. Very, very simple. And lastly, we add the conveyor rails. So the main rail track that goes through the steam chamber over here uh, must be made either from either steel or wolf mines since they transport igneous rock at high temperatures. The secondary rail track that goes uh, into the diamond heat exchanger can be made from whatever materials you like. So if we just zoom in a bit so it will be clear to see, the rail track begins from the loader, enters the bridge. From the bridge, we have two extended rails, one going into another bridge and into the uh, conveyor shutoff. And both ends connect into the steam chamber loop. Out of the conveyor shutoff, we have our sneaking rail going through the diamond heat exchanger and into the output of the system where we load it into the containers so that's our railing system done okay so everything is now connected now we wrap up by closing off sections adding water into the steam chamber hydrogen into the turbine room uh, hydrogen into the rail sensor some liquid into the vacuum chamber. Um, I prefer crude oil, but water is also fine. And planting some waste walls. Now we start off by closing uh, the steam chamber over here by adding two insulated tiles on the left and two tungsten tiles close to the mechanized airlock on the right. We also close off our um, improvised rail sensor with insulated tiles and we close off the conveyor shutoff right from here since so it won't transfer heat from the igneous rock into the turbine room okay so next up we finish the construction of the diamond heat exchanger by filling a few rows with diamond window tiles and wrapping it with insulated tiles now the auto sweeper inside the turbine room are not required but they save duplicates time by fertilizing the wizards so i extend a rail for my base where phosphorite is being transferred into the steam turbine room and then the sweepers fertilize the wizards with it. Now remember the gas uh, pipe we extended earlier. We can use this pipe to fill the rail sensor with hydrogen. Uh, I recommend using a gas pump for this. There we go. Because remember that it should have very small amount of hydrogen in it give reliable reading so what i like to do i just find a random pocket of hydrogen around the map place the gas pump and just uh, pump a few pockets of hydrogen monitor it and when i see a few pockets come in i immediately deconstruct it and the hydro sensor is good to go and once the steam turbine is filled with hydrogen and the steam chamber with water and we finish off by digging the volcano and then enclosing it with the final wall right over here. And last but not least, we deconstruct two tiles of the ladder to prevent duplicates from randomly wandering in and picking up igneous rock from the magma chamber. Okay, so finally, one last important detail. You need to calibrate the rail sensor on the first activation uh, of the system. 
Uh, the reason is that uh, hydrogen can be set to 23 degrees Celsius. The igneous rock will come out at around 400, 500 degrees Celsius and the hydrogen sensor will not have enough time to catch up onto the temperature and the sensor can give false reading. So to avoid this, we need to give the sensor a, a, a few moments to catch up uh, and give a reliable reading. So what I like to do is switch it to a very high value and above. This will ensure that the, for the first few moments, it will not activate the conveyor shutoff and you won't accidentally get some burning hot igneous rock through the exchanger. So you let the system stabilize once the hydrogen has been stabilized to approximately the temperature of the igneous rock on the rails. You can set it back to its original value and now your system is good to go. So if you've survived this long into the video, I would like to congratulate you. You now have the plans for a very simple yet highly efficient volcano tamer that not only extracts heat from magma, but also provides you with an infinite su supply of igneous rock at workable temperatures. And with that said, we are done. I would really like to hear what you think about my design. If you have any improvement, uh, suggestions, questions, I would be happy to hear them. And other than that, may your stone hatches never go hungry again. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.